Good morning. My name is Charles Greenberg, and I'm the Director of Business Development at Data Foundations. I'd like to thank you all for attending the latest in a series of ongoing informational webinars sponsored by Data Foundations that focus on crucial data management topics. But before we move on to our presentation on hierarchy management, let me just tell you a little bit about Data Foundations. Uh, as you may be aware, Data Foundations is a software products and services company dedicated to the better management of shared or shareable enterprise-wide data. And that includes, of course, master data, reference data, and shared enterprise metadata. We go back to 1998 as a management consultancy in data management and became a products company around 2002, uh, making us a pioneer in the master data and reference data space. We provide a single product framework, it's called OneData, and it effectively manages all shareable enterprise data, which would include operational and analytical master data, multi-domain master data, uh, it manages MDM in multiple styles of MDM, transactional, consolidated, hybrid, and reference data and shared metadata. And that's a fact our customers in many large organizations will readily attest to. Let's talk about our agenda for today. What is a hierarchy? Well, hierarchies come in different shapes and sizes and they support different facets of your business. So we'll look at illustrations of how they vary in some common business areas. In this section, we deconstruct hierarchies by structure, model, and representation, so not by functional area. We'll examine how different perspectives and requirements impact the changing structures of hierarchies. Regarding master data or reference data, where the term reference data is used to indicate analytical master data used in reporting and analysis, we'll want to understand how to handle hierarchical change, not from a governance perspective, but more from a versioning, slowly changing dimension perspective. So we're, we'll need to look at different approaches for change management. And we'll provide a summary of some of the best practices and guidelines that we have built through our own implementations. And finally, we'll talk about our product, OneData, a single platform for building and managing all your hierarchies, master data, and reference data. The chart of accounts hierarchy is the most common in the finance function, ranging anywhere from two levels up to 50 and 60 levels deep in some branches. In this case, an asymmetric hierarchy or ragged hierarchy as root to leaf is not the same. By the way, to be clear, like everyone else, we embrace the tree analogy as a means to better understand and explaining hierarchies. A hierarchy can be a simple three-level structure shown here with manufacturer drilling down to brand and then down to sub-brand. Each level has its own different set of attributes. Here are two flavors of organizational hierarchies. The first is similar to the product branding hierarchy with total company, business unit, and operating unit depicted as three levels. The second flavor of what is an organization structure or hierarchy is more from a perspective of resource allocation. Let's look more closely at this example of a hierarchy with an organization chart. It looks similar to the prior examples, but is inherently different as the number of levels between the director and administrative manager and between the director and policy implementation manager are not the same. It kind of looks the same, but it is not. Organization hierarchies are ragged, but not as deep as chart of accounts. When we deal with large organizations which have gone through multiple levels of M&A, ownership hierarchies can become complex. A key differentiation factor for any ownership hierarchy is that a given node can have multiple parents. 
In this example, Legal Entity 5 and Legal Entity 7 are owned by multiple parents. The route from the line of business to the key customer accounts from a sales perspective may look very different from how marketing actually sees it. This kind of hierarchy structure is found in most organizations. A challenge may be that each function wants to report differently. Alternate hierarchies imply multiple routes to get from the root to the leaf. Now we come to the gray area of master data and reference data and hierarchies. When we look at relationships between customer and product, both key MDM subject areas is product purchased by customer, the lowest level node of the customer hierarchy, or is it vice versa? That is, are customers or vendors who supply the product the lowest level node under finished goods? For that matter, in this example, from customer to address is a one-to-many relationship. We have one-to-zero or one relationships with super type subtype structures. In this example, a customer can be internal or external. We have many-to-many -many relationships with customer role relationship. Does that constitute a hierarchy? In this case, probably not as we never see customer address or customer role the same as brand sub brand or sales channel customer group. The reason being is that address is an operational entity and therefore less analytical. Again the lines are blurred and you can certainly define within your own organization what falls into which bucket. Taxonomies or classifications are inherently hierarchical structures used in various areas. Originally used to classify organisms, now they're used everywhere, such as in knowledge management, document classification. In fact, while we were researching a formal definition for taxonomies, we came across containment hierarchies, which is a specific kind of taxonomy where the child is actually a specific instance of parent. There are, in fact, quite a few new terms used in this area, enough for another webinar, in fact. Ontologies with concepts and relationships would not come under the hierarchy umbrella, as there is no fixed structure to them. What do we think a hierarchy is? Well, we think of it as an upside down.